Hey guys, it's ViperX420, and today I'm going to teach you guys how to install PadPipe. If you're wondering what this program is, it's a program to show controller input real-time while playing on your PC. And it can show a very huge range of different controllers if programmed correctly. But before getting into the programming aspect, we need to get this bad boy installed. And this is no easy feat. It took me a while to find the correct file to get it all running perfectly fine on my PC. Now, I have these files on my desktop and I will be providing the link to the downloads in the description down below. The first file we're going to need is Python 2.7. So we're going to go and install that, which I already have, but we're going to click run. Please wait while installer prepares, blah, blah, blah. And you, you click through the whole thing. I've already installed it. So we're going to just pretend like, uh, I installed it and move on. Once that's installed, you're going to move on to install this. And when you install this, it's going to ask you what folder you want to install it. Because you installed 2.7 first, it's actually going to show you Python 2.7 in the list of choices. You would click that and then proceed to install. And it will install the game straight into your Python folder. Once both of these are installed, then you can proceed to go to uh, PGU, which I forgot to move the file here. Let me see if I can locate it. PGU. There it is. That's the exact one you need. PGU 0 0.18. And you'll have this little setup file. And what you're going to want to do is run CMD to bring up the command prompt tool. Click here, copy, cd, oops, paste, to bring you in here. And then you can click and drag the file into the command prompt. Or you can type setup.py space install and then click enter. Once you do that, it will install this package exactly where it needs to be. Once that's complete, now we can move on to PadPipe. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna extract the, the contents of the folder to your desktop somewhere. So I'm just going to make a new folder here because I already have it down here, which is my updated version. As you can see from the original version, they only have GameCube, PlayStation, Super Famicom, and Wii U. And once everything's installed, you're able to open the program by double clicking on this file right here, PadPipe. As you can see, USB 0, 1, and here's the list of all the game skins we have. Well, I wasn't satisfied with the game skins it came with. So, instead, I'm going to delete this. I made my own. And so we're going to go click USB 0. 
which is my Nintendo 64 controller plugged into a Mayflash adapter. And we're going to click Run. And as you can see, we got a Nintendo 64 controller. And I'm going to move around the stick here. And as you can see, it's tracking it one to one ratio. If I push B and A, move six C sticks around. If I hold C up and C left, it'll actually put it in between. Um, there's a few reasons I went with this decision. Uh, one is a little bit more simplistic doing it this way like a stick because of how it uses Z axis and Z rotation. As well as it, now it can show both inputs at the same time to kind of emphasize, say if I'm playing a, a first person shooter on the 64, I can show that I am holding both buttons to kind of get an up left angle stuff like that. It also shows Z down here, L, R, all the D-pad start, and everything. So that's the Nintendo 64 controller. Next, we're going to close that. We're going to plug in my PS3 controller. And we're going to open up DS3 tool, which is most enjoy. And we're going to use X input, enable which will allow us to use all the X input uh, skins that I have put out and uh, fixed up to, to use with X input. So we got the GameCube one, which apparently didn't want to run. Oh, that's, that's what happened. I have a really bad wire, so... This tends to happen quite often. So, controller, Xbox 360, controller, GameCube, run, and there we go. We're going to make that smaller. So, the images were not made by me. This is the stock images that came with the program. I just modified the scripts just a wee bit. To work with X input. And as you can see, everything is working. Uh, the triggers are a little bit iffy because if you let go of the trigger too fast, it'll get stuck like that. And that's the only thing that's kind of iffy at this point with that kind of stuff. So we're going to close the, uh, the GameCube. Let's move on to NES. Down, left, up, right, select start, B, A. Then we got PlayStation. This is a PlayStation 3 one. We even got L2 and R2 in the corners, which are, again, triggers, which are a little bit weird. I think it's my controller. My R2 actually works really nicely, whereas my L2 gets a little stuck here and there. Then we got Super Nintendo, down, left, up, right, select, start, Y, B, X, A, L, and R. And those are all the new ones that I worked on in the last 24 hours. Just experimenting with the program and seeing what I could come up with and uh, what I can make compatible with my controllers right and uh it was pretty simple didn't take very long to learn uh now that i've shown you it working in action uh let's move on into the scripting half that i had to work with so this is the nintendo 64 controller setup i have all the buttons here all separate and everything all cut exactly the size then we would open up our skin file right as you can see, we start off with a general tab, which has a background, which is our base, our controller, background color, which is a slight black, and a width and height of the picture. And this, which I thought is analog, but I'm not too sure. I'm not 100% sure. So don't quote me on that. 
Uh, so I just left that one just because everything that I've seen with analogs had one and whatever didn't had zero. Then we have stick one, which has its stick picture, its position, size, which axes it's going to be using. So uh, zero and one, X and Y, the radius of which it can move from the circle so that, you know, you get an accurate um, point of origin with the thumbstick to show how far you're actually holding forward and back. And then a neat little addition my buddy CKY came up with to fix the invert problem on some controllers, invert X and Y. If you find something isn't uh, going the right way, say you push left and it goes right, that's an example, you can use this to invert it. So an example is my stick two was inverted, so I had to actually invert the X to work the way it's supposed to. And you would go through each button as well, and each button is numbered according to how it is in your uh, device manager. So if you were to go in here, control panel, click on, say, my PS3 controller right now, you'll see these numbers down here from 1 through 10. If I were to push square, that's 3. Push X, that's 1. Push circle, that's 2. Triangle, that's 4. R1, or L1 is 5. 6 is R1, and so on and so forth. And so you would have to figure out what each number is and then program it accordingly. So what works for one controller might not work for another controller, which is why I have them named accordingly to what it is. If it's an X input skin, it's going to be programmed for a PS3 or Xbox 360 controller. Whereas if it's a May flash adapter, it may have its own control scheme like the N64 did. So for that one, if I go to properties, you can see this has a 1 through 16. And so I had to go through, and it's like B, A, L, R, Z, start. All the directional buttons not only work as up, down, left, and right as a point of view, but they also work as numbers, 13, 15, 14, and 16. which is kind of weird. Then we got our Z rotation and Z axis for our C button and our left stick, which is our X and Y uh, axis. Now that I've explained that, and you guys might have a little bit more uh, knowledge on the subject, you may be able to fool around and create your own skin for the program. And I suggest starting one section at a time Make sure it loads. Once you know it loads, work on the next section. Test it, loads, work on the next section. Otherwise, you're going to run into an error and it's going to crash and you're going to be like, what did I do wrong? Which one did I screw up on? Is it too big? Is it too small? Is it a position error? You won't know until you, you go through everything. And that's why I can't stress enough to take things one at a time. And uh, other than that, uh, I hope this video was informative. I hope it helped you guys. I hope you guys get things all set up nice and easily because of this. If not, post down below where you're having problems. And I'll try and explain as much as I can in a following video. So until then, this is ViperX420 signing out. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time. Take care.